Okay, so we're still looking at linear transformations. And we're now going to see that every linear transformation from Rn to Rm can be represented by an m by n matrix. And conversely, every m by n matrix corresponds to a linear transformation between Rn to Rm. So m by n matrices, m by n matrices are exactly the linear transformations from Rn to Rm. So just note though that it's it's a transformation from Rn to Rm. Okay, that transformation. But it's an m by n matrix, right? Why? Because it's going to take in the input is going to be a vector with n rows, so that's something in Rn. The output is going to be the output is going to be a vector, a vector. Let's call it. Sorry, let's call it y with m rows, because when you take an m by n matrix, take an m by n matrix um, T. This matrix T is m by n. It means it's got n columns, so it's compatible for multiplying by an n row vector, and it's got m rows, so it gives you an m row vector. So it's an m by n matrix that transforms n vectors into m vectors. Okay. Now, here's an example. So they're saying that they, yeah, we have a linear transformation that sends t, that sends 1, 0 to 1, 1, and it sends minus 2, 1 to 0, 2. And this theorem says that it'll be a, a matrix, it'll be a two by two matrix, because this vector is an R2 and that vector is an R2. So we're going from R2 to R2. So there should be a two by two matrix that represents this. So let's do that. So first of all, it says, uh, let's start by convincing ourselves that the information above is enough to solve this problem. That by specifying how these two vectors transform, we know everything about the transformation T. First, notice that any point in R2 can be expressed as a linear combination of those two vectors, i.e. for any V, we have V is a scalar multiple of 1, 0, and it's plus a scalar multiple of minus 2, 1, right? That was what we said, uh, um, that was what we said uh, above in a previous video, um, above in the book, that uh, those two vectors, because they're not parallel to each other, they can, they can express the whole plane as linear combinations. So then the transformation, okay, will be the transformation of that vector V, but that vector V is just alpha times 1, 0 plus beta times minus 2, 1. Then, because it's linear, because T is linear, there's actually two steps here, right? So it's linear, so it preserves or respects the um, addition, vector addition. So T of those two vectors, alpha 1, 0, and beta minus 2, 1 added together is the same as if you do T of the first vector plus T of the second vector. Okay, now this transformation is linear, so it also respects the scalar multiplication. So this is the same. T of alpha 1, 0 is the same as if you have alpha outside, then T of 1, 0. And T of beta minus 2, 1 is the same as if you have beta times T of minus 2, 1. Okay, that's precisely what we have here in this line, so I don't need that. Okay, so that should be clear how we go from how we go from this line to this line, now using the fact that t is linear. Now, we said that t sends 1, 0 to 1, 1. That means t of 1, 0 equals 1, 1. And it sends minus 2, 1 to 0, minus 2. That means t of minus 2, 1 equals 0, minus 2. Okay? So here we have t of 1, 0. So that is 1, 1. And here we have t of minus 2, 1, so that is 0, minus 2. And now we have this alpha times thing, that one, and this beta times that one. They're still there. So that if we wanted to, we could express this thing just as one vector on its own, alpha here, and here we'd have a vector over to alpha minus 2 beta, right? Uh, of course, it's a vector in R2. Okay, so we've taken an arbitrary vector 
v in R2, written as a linear combination of these two vectors, and then shown that, that gives, what that gives you, what t then sends that vector v to. Okay. So, there must be a, well, we've used the linearity of t to move from the first line to the second. Okay, that's what we did there, right? Going from there to there was about the linearity. The information given completely describes the linear transformation, so let's find it. Um, so they mean, let's find the matrix that represents it. Let A be the matrix that represents this transformation. Remember that the matrix multiplication AX is just a linear combination of the columns of A, right? This is the definition of matrix multiplication, as I said. So, look, A times 1, 0, that means 1 times the first column of A plus 0 times the second column. So in effect, doing this, doing A times 1, 0, 1 times the first column, 0 times the second column, it can give you what the first column of A is. So he, here we might put that this A, A times 1, 0, it gives you the first column of A. So it gives you A11, A21, right? Now, we know that A10, we said that A of, we said that, sorry, we said that T of 1, 0 was transform, T of 1, 0, we sorry, we said that t of 1, 0 is 1, 1, right? So if this A is going to be the matrix that represents this transformation T, then A of 1, 0, which is actually the first column of A, A1, 1, A2, 1, must be 1, 1, right? So now we know that A has the first column, 1, 1, and that we don't know the second column yet. Okay, but we also have that A, we have that minus 2, 1 is sent by T to, look, minus 2, 1 is sent to 0, minus 2. So we can say that A of minus 2, 1, that's going to have to end up being 0, minus 2. So minus 2, 1, that means linear combination of the columns. So minus 2 times the first column of A, which we've worked out is 1, 1, plus 1 times the second column of A, okay? And when you add those together, apparently you must get 0 minus 2. So in other words, that top row is saying that 2 here, sorry, this bit here, top row of this is saying minus 2 plus a12 must equal 0. And the second row is saying minus 2 plus a22 must equal minus 2. And of course, the only way that can be is if a12 equals 2 and if a22 equals 0. So we have a. a is 1, 2, 1, 0. So you could test it, right? a of, so a of 1, 0 is 1, 1, 2, 0 times 1, 0. Of course, that's just 1, 1, as we wanted. a of minus 2, 1, that's 1, 1, 2, 0 times by minus 2, 1. That's just minus 2 plus 2, which is 0, minus 2 plus 0, which is minus 2. Yes. Okay. And now we can also, we could use this to work out what, what A does to any general vector. You know, so A sends x, y to the vector, to, you know, 1, 1, 2, 0 times x, y, which is then x plus 2, y and x there. So that's what t does. So you can even now say that t of x, y equals x plus 2, y, x. That's the actual linear transformation that was, that was specified, right? So by saying, that, by saying what it does with these two vectors, because those two vectors together can generate the whole plane, we can say what it does to any vector, any linear combination of them. That allows us to find what the matrix that represents a linear transformation is. So when you say that the matrix represents a linear transformation, you mean that the linear transformation can be thought of as the matrix multiplied by any vector to be transformed. And when you do that, you find that, you know, if you do that timesing out, you find that the, the vector you get as a result is, is that. So the transformation originally specified by, by what it does to two different vectors is, in general, this.